Uh, so we're going to be joined right now by Ron James. He's the director of media relations for the Mutual UFO Network, also known as MUFON. Uh, thank you so much for being here with us. I know we're talking about uh, this object that was uh, recently discovered. Uh, some call it the Atlas Rock and really want to talk to you about, you know, what did we find out so far about the Atlas Rock that maybe we didn't know before? Well, you know, this is a really interesting story because it's an example of the Internet gone absolutely insane. <laughs> the, uh, the only real source for good information about this is NASA. Unfortunately, everything else is a conspiracy theory. Um, NASA is still classifying it as a comet. They're saying that there's nothing radically unusual about it. Now, to counter that, we have Professor Avi Loeb mm -hmm. uh, from Harvard, who I have great respect for, and he is pointing out some legitimate concerns about the uniqueness uh, of this object coming in from uh, interstellar space. And so it's worth listening to what he has to say, and he may very well be right. But what I've noticed as I try to gather information that is accurate is that YouTube and social media has gone absolutely nuts with uh, chat bots and with AI videos that are just spreading wild stories about and then crediting it to NASA and crediting it to Avi Loeb. And we're not getting good information from any of these sources. It's, it's just hyping it up. We did have Avi Loeb on one of our shows, and he did say, you know, as far as what they're learning, it's still coming out. So these people, like you're saying on social media, they are leaning in uh, to what they believe, not what they know. Uh, what do you think about the fact that, you know, when we talk about space and we talk about specifically not maybe this Atlas Rock, but UFOs, that we're starting to hear more and see more videos of people saying that they've had these encounters, these sightings? Well, this kind of thing has been going on since the beginning of recorded history, and it's being amplified right now through our technological capabilities, our media capabilities, and public interest in the topic. Uh, but the, MUFON and, and other people that study this field have known for a very long time that there are non-human intelligences probably from a variety of different sources interacting with humanity and that certain elements of the government and private industry have known about it for since at least the 1930s and some of the institutions have known about it longer than that so this is getting to the point where it's pretty irrefutable you know, it must be kind of frustrating, you know, hearing about all the stuff that's going on online and knowing that it can go so far and they're crediting, uh, well, someone that they shouldn't credit, really, with this information. Uh, how do you guys yeah. try to, like, you know, control this? Or, or what do you think to people at home should be looking for when it comes to learning more information about this kind of stuff? It, as with anything that's coming out on the online today, verify your information. I meet too many people who watch half a video on YouTube and then they start telling their friends about it as if it was fact. And when it comes to this comet, or whatever it turns out to be, um, there is no evidence that it's a spaceship. There is no evidence that it's lighting up itself. There's all kinds of stories on the web. It's changing color. It's accelerating. It's changing course. We, we, we are picking up more disinformation than real information. And I think as much as I would normally say that NASA might perhaps not be exactly telling us all the truth all the time, just like with this recent uh, they found life on Mars and didn't tell us for a year. Uh, so I'm not saying that totally believe everything that you get from NASA either, but I'm saying that they're just NASA, Avi Loeb stuff, and stay away from these AI-generated videos that are popping up that are, you know, telling us that it's uh, that it's way more than it might be. You know, the last time we spoke, Ron, we were talking about the hearings that were happening uh, in Washington, D.C., and we were talking yes. about, you know, what would come out of that. Would the public learn something new? Uh, what did you think about the hearings, and did we learn anything new, ultimately? Well, I spent a lot of time in Washington, D.C., uh, working with Congress, and I know all these witnesses, but I have to say that this hearing was, was somewhat lackluster. We know that the quality of witnesses that have come forward and been marched through congressional offices to talk to, to sitting members, we have people that have been involved in these programs. They're just afraid to come forward and, and identify themselves, and for good reason. So we had a hearing. It was another one of those we're telling you things from secondhand knowledge and we don't have any proof. And at some point, we've got to get beyond that. Ron, I'm going to ask you kind of a off the wall question here. <laughs> what is something sure. that in, in your opinion is is true or has been, you know, checked 
that you you think is unbelievable to yourself and, and whenever you tell someone like some person on the street they think it's also unbelievable that's happening in space well I think that the uh, if it's unbelievable it's unbelievable if, if you want to talk about things that, that have some kind of proof then they're no longer unbelievable they're proven I, I think that one of the most extreme stories in the whole history of this we still go back to Roswell but now we're uncovering that back in the 1930s in Italy a craft was uncovered I know for a fact there's a documentary coming out about it and David Grush spoke about it and we're getting more and more of the puzzle pieces of how the government got involved in this and how they got involved in covering it up and when it really started. And so these stories, uh, yeah, craft was recovered in Italy. The uh, Roman Catholic Church was supposedly involved in brokering it to the U.S. It was the beginning of the modern UFO cover-up. It happened in 1933. And these stories are, get, are, are going to be coming out soon. And so the history and the timeline and some documented proof is, is on the way. Wow. Okay, let me ask you this because you remember and listen, I have to remember a lot of stuff. So my dates may be a little off and where it happened sometimes is off. But there was this big parade of uh, somewhere on another in another country where they claimed that they found aliens. Do you remember this? And it turned out that those aliens were not they had like this, they showed it. They like, you know, put it on display and all of this stuff. And it turned out not to be true. Do you remember this? You're shaking your head. Yeah, I, I had a nickname for that. I called it Mummy Gate. Yes, um, <laughs> yes. Yeah, there's been a couple of instances where supposed bodies have been have been recovered and and shown to the public. The the first one that I can remember turned out to be a museum display in New Mexico that was supposed to be a, an alien. That got a lot of hype. Um, but the one that's more uh, well known today is these Nazca mummies that are supposedly uh, mummies of non-human. Uh, beings. Now, there's been some studies being done on that, and it's evolving. And at this point, I don't think we can draw a conclusion one way or the other. There, there's people that say they're totally fake, but they're, they're, as they dig deeper and they do more and more uh, studies on these things, they're they're uh -huh. finding things to confirm that they might be real beings. Uh, otherwise, they've been talking about how they were glued together from different animal bones and, and basically arts and crafts wrapped in, in fabric. But we're finding out that that might not be the case. But when we talk about UFOs, uh, I would think someone would have to demand those, you can't talk about UFOs without acknowledging, you know, a, who's driving. Yeah, who's behind it, like non-human life, um, possible aliens. I know people don't like to talk about it, but I mean, it's the, or, or maybe we're kind of like, you know, in disbelief sometimes, but it's the facts. Well, David Grush, who w worked in Intel and was tasked with trying to get to the bottom of the UFO mystery, has come forward and, and said, yes, we have recovered craft. We have the pilots that were in them. Uh, and then, of course, you know, an advanced civilization is going to have AI and drones and different abilities to, uh, to project craft into space without having to have, like, live pilots. But um, all of this is turning out to be correct. And the stories that have been whispered in the, the uh, investigations that have happened over the years are all really turning out to be something that is going to be factual at some point. And we're going to be able to prove it even beyond where we've proven it now. Uh, a lot of it is true. Yeah, interesting. Okay, back to Atlas. Um, you know, people who are getting into astronomy, astronomy or, you know, are amateur astronomers, uh, could they contribute some useful data to, you know, what observations you guys are trying to, um, to collect to find out more? Well, right now, really seeing Atlas requires advanced telescopes. It's still a long way away. Um, and unfortunately, the armchair astronomers uh, and, and other people who claim to be astronomers are projecting a lot of things about this object that are just not true. Mm. And so I think that until it gets close enough to observe with, with layman's type of equipment, we need to just pay attention to the official sources. I'm not saying believe everything you're told. I'm not saying don't explore the, the other uh, things that are being said about this object. But please check your facts before you decide what to believe. And you, when you say that, when you say check your facts and try to figure out what the truth is, how do you suggest people get to that truth? Because we are living in a time where social media you know, really blows things up. Uh, AI is real. Sometimes you don't know. I was listening to a song on Instagram one day, and I'm like, I'm going to go check that song out on Apple Play. And it turned out it's not a real person. It's generated by AI. It's an AI 
album that's out there, I would have never known. Um, how do you suggest people get to the root of the truth? Well, again, go back to the source of information. Check, just start with NASA, start with Avi Loeb uh, from Harvard and follow their information. If you want to branch out from there to look into some of the more esoteric claims, you can do it. But start with who we know is supposedly established with the facts. NASA can tell you what they believe about it. Avi Loeb can tell you what he thinks it might be. But these are the two main information drivers that are driving all these other weird videos that are popping up. And if you see a video online, and it says something like 3A1 slash Atlas, you know that's AI. You know the entire video is being read by AI. Uh, look for those grammatical errors. People are, I've never seen such disinformation being created by AI. Entire channels are popping up on YouTube that are AI driven and they're just pulling videos and pulling clips and throwing stuff together and people are watching it and thinking it's real information. It's a, it's, it's a big mistake. Uh, Pay attention to your sources and pay attention to where the videos that you're watching for entertainment are coming from. So, Ron, I don't know if you're able to see that video that we just popped up of um, them kind of cluing in on a on a, an object amongst a bunch of other stars and it moving. Uh, can you explain is this one? Is this is this one obviously must come? It is from NASA. It looks Atlas. like. Of Atlas. Yeah, but again, you know, that's not like somebody's photographing AI Atlas. If you read it, it's a, it's a, it's yeah. an animation. It's an illustration. And there's stories out there about how it's changing in size, it's changing color, it's made up of certain metal and materials that, that it shouldn't exist in its state. It's, uh, <laughs> it's supposedly uh, flying under its own power. It's lighting up. I mean, I'm hearing all this stuff, but then when I go to try to find, well, where did that come from? having a hard time finding any reliable data source that confirms this. Based on what you've seen, based on what you know so far, what do you think about uh, Atlas? I think it's very interesting. I think that it does display some characteristics that might be hard to explain. Nothing, you know, I'm, you can't rule anything out, but you can't prove it either. Is it possibly a probe from another solar system or another, um, another spot in the galaxy that's coming through here? It could be. But, you know, it's, Occam's razor kind of tells us that if it's a duck, it, it's a duck. And so we're just going to have to see what happens. It is coming close to Mars. It is doing some strange things. We're going to get a better look at it soon. Um, official information will become more plentiful. But right now, I, I'm leaning more toward it just has a natural explanation. And until uh, we find out differently, and I pay very close attention to Avi, and when he comes up with things that make sense, I pay very close attention to that because he is a true pioneer. So choose the right sources for information and then pay attention to what they're saying. Okay, and this was first captured by the Hubble telescope. Is that accurate? I think so, yeah. Okay. All right, and here we are talking about it. You know, uh, for people who want to go maybe straight to your network for information about anything outer space, uh, where can people find more? So they can go to MUFON.com, that's M-U-F-O-N. We're the largest organization and oldest in the world studying this topic. We have field investigators all over the world. And for people wanting to get up to speed on what this phenomenon is go, going back, there's the movie I made called Accidental Truth. It's narrated by Matthew Modine, and it's free to watch on YouTube. It gives you the whole history of the subject, and I, I invite people to watch it. The next one's coming out soon. And it'll get you up to speed on, on the modern era of UFO deception. Yeah, I think um, that's something that people want to watch. People are intrigued by this. As I just said, right before we, we tossed over to you, I need to get more on these documentaries and some <laughs> of these movies. First one up will be yours. Thank you very much, Ron, for joining us. We really appreciate your time. Thanks for having me. When you uh, meet an alien, uh, come back on the show and so we can talk know. about it, okay? Yeah, that'll be big news. You'll be the first to okay, know. Okay, okay, good. Sure, I'll go now and you'll come in person. With the alien. With the alien. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. We'll, uh, We'll arrange a flight. <laughs> All right, perfect. Thanks, Thank Ron. you so much. All right, so.